Uh, I mean, you did the whole deal, man. Buds and the whole thing, and the story leading up to it is is pretty crazy. Getting what 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 in, what what you had to endure and uh, and uh, undergo to kind of achieve your dream. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and I guess I never really fit the mold, Rich, because mm. I was born and raised in North Georgia. I never played sports. Um, I had never swam in a swimming pool. Right. Never ran on purpose. Never, never was in a pool until you were in the military. A until right? I went to yeah take the the PST to get right. a SEAL contract. You but know. your mom is a triathlete, right? Yeah. She so, didn't bring you down to the pool ever. No, she she would bring me out on the trail when I was young, you know, mm -hmm. and allow me to hike around and kind of follow her. But water was, I mean, growing up in North Georgia, man, like you know. We didn't, we, we lived out in the country, uh -huh. so we didn't have a, a swimming pool close. And like the most swimming you would do would be like to swim out across the pond to unhook your fishing lure that was hung on a log. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So I, like dog paddle was, was, uh -huh. was my limit. Um, so yeah, I, you know, but, but I worked through that. Um, I, you know, when I went to take that physical standards testing, it was a run, swim, push up, pull up, sit up. I failed that thing probably a dozen times, dude, mm -hmm. but I kept coming back. Every week I would take it and improve a little bit and a little bit. Finally passed with minimum standards. And no like mentors or anybody like no, that? No, no really prior military you know, service in my family. Um, it wasn't about me being a, a patriot at the time, nothing like that. It was just me wanting more out of life. Right. And, you know, I always tell, I, I'm always hesitant when I tell that story because I don't ever want to sound like I deserve more or that I'm better than anyone else because there were a lot of guys that I worked alongside in that industry and they were happy with wow. that life. Um, and that's awesome. But I wasn't happy with it. Yeah. You know, at the time. You just had a little bit more ambition. Yeah, to just do maybe else. a little more ambition. But, you know, I tell people all the time some of the greatest men that I that I've ever met in my life have wore overalls every day of their lives and, sure. and work the fields and they've raised a beautiful family and and they have this really happy wholesome complete lifestyle but for me I just wanted to kind of step out mm -hmm. so that's where the the decision I guess was born and like I said I was looking on on my computer and, and researching jobs within the military and this thing just pops up I'm um, talking about Navy SEALs, and I didn't really even know what Navy SEALs did, but it said this is the hardest military training in the free world. And it was like, for something clicked in my head, like, boom, mm -hmm. this is this is what I'm going to go do. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't I can't really explain why it was that one single thing, right. But uh, but yeah, from that point forward, that became my mission. That became my entire dream in life is to to get on the start line and at least get a shot you know to to reach this goal that i had set for myself yeah. so you sign up for the military you head off but it doesn't exactly go to plan no it didn't quite go as <laughs> yeah. as i planned and so basically what happened rich is you have to go through navy boot camp before you go to seal training right. While you're in boot camp, they run you through a series of medical evaluations to make sure that your body is physically perfect. They're not going to send you off to this super arduous training unless right. they know you're good to go. So I make it all the way through boot camp. And the last day, we have our big final training exercise. And like um, that is wrapping up and everybody's heading off to graduation. And my drill instructor comes to me and says, Chad, uh, you need to go see medical. They found something that they need to talk to you about. So in that last moment, as, as everybody's going off to, you know, to chase their dream and yeah. their goals, I'm walking over to medical as a, I'm just a young kid and thinking, what in the world is this all about? And I walk in to this office and the dive medical officer standing there and he says chad um we found a pericardial cyst on your heart and he said this is totally asymptomatic he said it was never going to bother you your whole life but we're afraid when you go down to depth when you're diving as a seal that the pressure change could potentially burst that cyst on your heart mm. and he said we can't let you be a seal yeah so 
he based all, all my dreams and aspirations were taken from me in that one dis- definitive moment you know i was i was given this this you know you can't do this right so how did that feel it was cru- it, it it crushed me man it it crushed me but the strange thing is is that when he when he told me that, even though this was the guy in charge telling me that I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do, for I, I never let go of that dream. Yeah. So I, I immediately said to myself, I'm going to find some way over, under, around this condition, you know? Even though there's basically, uh, I mean, short of heart surgery, there's no way around this, right? So what do they what do they do they just reassign you at that point? So they try that's what they tried. The Navy tried uh-huh. to just send me out to the fleet. Right. Um, which is the big navy, which is a, a awesome that's an awesome place to be, but it's not where I had set my right. goals. So how do you finagle out of that? So I reached back to my family, they made some phone calls, um, and I was able to get an administrative discharge from the Navy. It was basically because they had essentially breached the contract that I had with them Uh because my contract was to go to SEAL training. So I got out of the Navy. Uh, Like I say, I still had had aspirations to be a SEAL. And and the only avenue, like you said, Rich, was I got to have heart surgery. Right. So I start going to all these heart surgeons here in Atlanta. and And every surgeon I went to, would told me the same thing that the dive medical officer told me. This is a rare condition. It's asymptomatic. We're not willing to accept the risk of performing this surgery. Even if you waived all of it. Even if I waived all of it. They didn't want to touch it. You just live your whole life with this thing. It's no it's no problem. They didn't want to touch it, man. Uh Uh-huh. So I finally find a surgeon in Atlanta named Dr. Cooper and he had served in the army as a, a combat surgeon downrange. Um and he understood what I wanted to go do. Yeah. I think more so than somebody that hasn't served in right. that capacity. How many how many doctors did you go to before him? I was turned down by three doctors. To the best of my memory, it was yeah. three doctors before I finally found Dr. Cooper. Uh-huh. So it was a it, he he pretty much. I remember him pretty much telling me, "Okay, we've got a general plan, but I, we've never done this surgery before, so we're going to have to open you up and we're going to figure it out." You know when we get in there, right? The so best crack, way to take crack your sternum open that way, so like open heart. They actually um, detached my pec muscle, moved it up, and then went in through my rib cage to, to get wow. to my heart. Yeah. Wow. Was yeah. there a moment beforehand where you thought, like, this is insane? There was one yeah. distinct moment, <laughs> and it was it was actually the morning of the surgery. Man, I was riding to the hospital with my dad at like 5 a.m. And I look over at my dad. I had this moment of doubt, and I look over at my dad, and I said, Dad, do you think I should really go through with this? And he looked back at me, and without stuttering, he says, Son, if you want to be a SEAL, you have no choice. Yeah. And that resonated with me. That's the way my mind ticks. We'll talk about that. I mm-hmm. simplify things. That resonated with me. And I just said, Roger that. Um, I, you know, the, the Navy had to review the civilian medical documents, you know, from the surgery and basically sign off on it. So this whole time, I'm just gambling, man. How long did that take? I can tell you, I was back in the Navy standing before the same dive medical officer that has, that had disqualified me less than a year after surgery. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I walked back in his office, Rich, and... He looks at me and he says, "What are you doing back here, man?" Uh-huh. He remembered me yeah. because it was it was rare, so so rare and and all this is written. This is a public information. If you just Google Navy Seal pericardial cyst, you can read how rare it was in a medical journal that that doctor wrote. Uh huh. And so I hand him over the documents and he looks them over and I think that he really respected what I had done, the risk that I had taken. Right, like this is the kind of crazy we need here. That's right, right. and yeah. he understood it. Uh-huh. The doctor understood it more than anyone else could have understood because he knew what was involved with with the surgery. So I, I'm in a holding pattern for a few months waiting for the, the BUDS class to kind of class up, but 
Yeah, pretty much. Essentially, I'm, I'm right back in, uh, and I finally get to toe the line mm. um, there at my biggest dream and aspiration that I've ever had. And brother, nothing was going to stop me. In buds is really all that hard. Meaning like in isolation, in like isolation. each individual task, it's just the accumulation of them. The hardest thing is when you when you look at the total picture, it's the grind, man. Uh -huh. And that's why, that's why dudes quit. Essentially, I would say that's the number one reason that people quit. It's just like running an ultra. You know how to break an ultra down. Well, Buds is like that, but magnify it into like a, it's like a six month long ultra, you know? Right, right. Well, the other option is to quit. Right? The other so option how you, is to quit. Yeah, but you just don't put that on the table. I don't put it on the table, man. And, and I'm not, by no means am I trying to sound uh, super tough. Or I subscribe to this saying, it's be hard when it gets hard. Uh-huh. And in an ultra, it gets hard. So that's when I like to hunker down. Yeah, there's this ethos out there. I, I saw you kind of speaking about this on Instagram. Um, out there, like, stay hard. You got to be hard 24-7. You know, and I think people in general need a kick in the pants. And that's mm -hmm. a worthy message that I think is helpful to a lot of people who have gotten a little too cushy or comfortable in mm -hmm. their lives. But staying hard all the time is not a sustainable lifestyle philosophy, is it? It's not sustainable, yeah. Rich. And, and I, I really feel like um, for me personally, it's a dangerous philosophy because if you have, if you think as a man or a woman that you have to be hard all the time, we said it's not sustainable. So you're going to fall short of that mark. Uh, and when you fall short of that mark, you're going to beat yourself up about it. And it just causes problems, uh, I feel like, for me personally. And it causes problems in, in, in relationships, man. Uh -huh. you, know, when, you know, when I was active duty, you know, I could be out on the road or be on deployment. Well, when, when you come back, you got to be able to, to love your family and, and love the other people around you and, and, and show compassion and, and emotion. And, and those, all, those aren't components of being hard all the time, no, but they're components they're, that are necessary to living a healthy yeah. lifestyle. I mean, what's the point otherwise, right? But they're not, they're not teaching that to you in BUDS. No, that's something yeah. that I had to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, they turn you into this, uh, I don't want to uh -huh. say monster, but they turn you into what I guess society would call an alpha male in BUDS. Right, you know? right. So stay hard when it's, it's appropriate to be hard have, or when, when you need to be hard. Have a place inside of you yeah. that, you can, that you can go to when it gets hard and you can get the job done. Mm -hmm.